Hey, hey, we're back with more Live from the Heartland. This is Michael James. I'm here with Katie Hogan. Uh, our pal Tom Clark is off today. And we are having a great time with our guests. And you were just listening to some beautiful music. And that was uh, by Erin McDougall, who is our next guest. And she's sitting right here in red and black, anarchist colors. She's ready to go. <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks Welcome, for having Aaron. me. It was really yes. nice listening to your music. Uh, Thank you. you know, Lynn sent us a whole lot of tunes to check out, and I just let them keep running. And I. Uh, <laughs> You know, you've been compared a little bit to Anita O'Day. I started thinking Julie London. I started thinking yeah. Harvey's Bristol Cream. You know, uh, awesome. Winter by the Fire. <laughs> you know, good morning to you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what one looks like and what one sounds like, you know, don't always necessarily m match. Well, uh, you look pretty good and your music is really <laughs> nice, too. You do yeah. look like your music. <laughs> do I? Yes, you do. I always feel that uh, I, try to, I try to exceed the... Uh, the stereotypes, you know, of a woman in jazz, because uh, often, you know, photographers love to, to do, you know, salacious photos of you or whatnot, or if you're photogenic, and then, I say, and then you get pigeonholed into, like, being like a chanteuse when you're really yeah, just trying you, to be an Yeah, but you have a lot of pretty nice pictures of yourself <laughs> on, when you they, go to, you Photographers know, take them, most yeah. of them, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> those are many, selfies. How many inches are those heels that you're wearing? Uh, I think these are... I've never seen these, heels this These are high. Aldo shoes. Oh, come on. You look like you were in the... You lived in the 70s, my dear. Oh, and yeah, bell bottoms and like stuff. heels like these. <laughs> these are uh, five yeah, and a half Yeah, but he hung out with feminists who didn't yeah. uh, do skills. <laughs> I'm a feminist. And feminists can wear stilts. heels, Kate. You're you're good. Yeah, feminists yeah, can wear good. lipstick and wear stilts. All right. So you're a jazz singer. Yes. How did you end up getting there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a jazz singer. Um, I think the short answer is, and speaking of short, I'm like so short for this microphone. I'm like, well, it can be, it can be moved. <laughs> I didn't want to touch Cut, it. Yeah. Wanna... There you go. Um, okay, there I am. Hello. There you go. So uh, the short answer is that uh, my grandfather was my first influence. He uh, lived with us and our family uh, lived in our home in Ohio and he loved jazz. I wanted to be like Madonna or whatever was cool in the 80s. I don't even, I don't even know if she was cool because I've never been cool. But... <laughs> well, pretty cool to me. <laughs> You're surrounded by... Uh, we're, we're all in that same boat. I, I've always just kind of been, hence the album, an outside story. I've always kind of been an outsider, I feel, anyway. But uh, um, I wanted to be either musical theater, Broadway, or you know, this pop sensation as all probably little kids who like to sing and dance did. And my grandfather was adamant about teaching me about jazz. Good for him. Julie London among them. Julie London um, was hot. She was good. Did she, who was the one? She did Cry Me a River, right? She that did. was one of his Cry favorites. So. Well, he loved Nat King Cole, so Nat King Cole ultimately was the person that the best. really uh, ushered me into jazz, but I didn't really get into it until I moved to Chicago in 1996. How about wow. the Broadway musical part of your influences? What ones did you <laughs> find well, I because I danced the first two thirds of my life. I, I was a dancer and um, uh, ballet, tap, jazz. I was a serious ballet dancer, and then I just realized anorexia is not for me. Is that a girl? <laughs> <laughs> it took up too much, too many years of my life, and clearly that's not the issue now. But um, uh, the dancing kind of, you know. Went away and it, it ensconced, came up. you know, musical theater. So for me, it, it, it was an easy, you know, um, transition. And um, I, my mother is a flight attendant still for United Airlines, and would always fly us into Chicago from Columbus, Ohio, to see musicals and the ballet in Chicago, and then we'd fly home. And uh, because she was based in Chicago, even though we lived in, in Ohio. Were you in any rock and roll in your life? I'm just thinking. Uh, my dad used to do a lot of Mary Martin and play a lot of musical stuff and it was a war in our house growing up for me <laughs> listening to R&B and my dad listening to show tunes. Well, my, no, I mean my mom, I would say out of everyone in the household, my mother was a big Janis Joplin fan and she loved, um, I don't remember, Boston. She loved oh. Tears for Fears in uh -huh. the 80s. You're, You're such a good daughter, daughter <laughs> remembering all these uh, Oh, and she loved Bette Midler's The Rose, so, you know, whenever I sing that, or if I sing that for her, she's she cries. She cries, <laughs> yeah. of course. So, how, wait, wait I can, I, can I just <laughs> jump in here, Michael? Because Flapper Girl Productions, what a great name. Thanks. What, uh, what is, I know that you've produced your own CDs through that. Any other uh, artists that you well, uh, the, have worked with the, or produced? The flapper, no, I mean, I've produced other artists in terms of, I did something called the FGP Flapper Girl Productions Jazz Series for a couple of years uh -huh. um, in conjunction um, 
with uh, with a, another studio, a recording studio, where basically we put on um, concerts inside a recording studio. So we put a live audience in. Very they cool. paid a cover that paid for the musicians to play, and then we recorded the. Um, Situation result. live, uh -huh. and I like to take musicians that had never worked together before to really have show an her the convergence moment. studio. Yeah, I know. I would love to do that. Yeah. So the Flapper Girl part of that um, originated from uh, the late '90s when I was in school. I was doing um, piano bar, like cabarets, and you know I thought jazz meant laying on a piano. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I was so hated by musicians in the city. <laughs> <laughs> like abroad, um, like I, I, embod yeah, I embodied every stereotype of female <coughs> singers that I'm still to this day fighting 20 years later. Um, but I didn't know any better. You know, I came from Ohio. I, I, I really didn't have any experience singing jazz until I moved to, to the city. So someone came up to the piano and said, "You look like a little flapper." Because I had a kind of gaming haircut uh -huh. and very pale. And uh, so this person, uh, his name was Lee McLean. I still remember that he he died. He was a he was a lawyer that came in every Tuesday to a vets. Do you remember a vets? Sure, yeah. sure. I was there every Tuesday. Dang. Uh, and he came out. He'd come in every Tuesday, drink champagne, bring me a glass of champagne. I was like, I'm not old enough to drink it. He's like, Okay, just drink it. Don't you yeah. don't need to say that aloud. Right. <laughs> I'm like, Are you a lawyer? He's like, Zip it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he said, you're the it girl, you're the flapper girl. So that became, when I put out my first ah, album, ah. Flapper Girl Productions. Very good, good <laughs> catch there. So, and, and although I know you've played everywhere, uh, including the Green Mill, I saw a great photo of you on, uh, performing with the band at the Green Mill. Um, right now, you, you mostly tour, is that Well, right, right now, the album just released it, this, this, the latest album just released last Friday, which is my birthday. Hallelujah. Happy also birthday. traumatic. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> the album is uh, don't be uh, uh, the album is outside the soiree and it's on Miles High record label and we released it on Friday, where uh, I did my kickoff CD release uh, tour at the Acorn Theater. I don't know if you've ever been, but in it's Michigan, fabulous. Yes, I've it's, never been there. Yeah, it's in Three Oaks, Michigan. It's right. this kind of sleepy but arty town, right. and right. it's literally one of my favorite venues in the country. Um, You're not alone there. There's a bunch of artists who I really just love it. Love yeah. it there. So go that was my second year there, and um, now uh, I'm moving on to uh, several gigs in Los Angeles and in New York. Uh, and then we'll be in like Miami, all over the country, and then back in Chicago, hopefully before um, before May. You know, when I was doing a little research on you before you came on the show, I noticed that you had played with and or sang with Ira Sullivan. Yes. who was a famed trumpet and saxophone player, he still is around, mm -hmm. he comes to town. I actually had read about him in Downbeat, uh, uh, and I was doing a paper as a sophomore in 1962 oh about the socialization of jazz musicians, and I went down to his crib in uh, Old Town somewhere and hung out. I was all dressed up, and he and some guys, I think they were all getting partying and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've always liked Ira Sullivan, and he, he lives man. in Florida now, and he comes back. What's your association with him? Because um, he played with Charlie Parker. I know. Yeah, he's played with everyone. I don't even remember how we became friends. Probably from the years and years and years of me going to Jazz Showcase and singing there, and he plays there every year. Uh, they call it for Charlie Joe Siegel. For Joe Siegel, they call it Charlie Parker Month for his birthday. They do it. Um, they've been doing it since 1947. Wow. Okay, so 71 years he's been playing at the Jazz Showcase. Um, <clears throat> and so I've seen him there for years, and somewhere along the lines, I don't know if he saw me sing at the pump room years ago. I don't remember. I, it's too early. I don't know. But he uh, he was very kind to me, and then I reached out to him some years ago and uh, said I'd, I'd you know love to work with you, and he said oh, it'll be my pleasure. And he's just you know he's very very religious. Oh, I, he is. You know, talk about anarchy. I'm, a, I'm an atheist for sure, and he's very religious these days. Well, and that probably was a newer thing in his life. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing. Uh, he's been, I think he's been, he's been a born again Christian for maybe most of my life at this point. I think, but um, he That's he okay. will leave. He will leave. Uh, he will leave literature all over my house. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> you know, uh, so about he's Sullivan, I didn't know. <laughs> oh my God, he's a doll. He's 
So we've done house concerts, we've done concerts on the south side and recording studios like with that FGP jazz and, uh, series. Uh -huh. And um, we've just we've just enjoyed a great friendship. I just called him the other day because he, uh, there was a big bridge collapse in Miami, three miles from where he lived. Oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah. Let's uh, let's hear a track from your your new album. Okay. Uh, what, which one are we going to hear? I think we're going to listen to Spring Can Really Hang You Up the Most. Oh, right? Especially when it's snowing. Get ready. Right? We're in the <laughs> spring. Yeah, you're playing. Here. I tell you so many stories about Ira. Whoops. Oh uh, we'll see each other another time. Hey, are you familiar with Judy Roberts? Um, yeah. Some uh, our, our third host is listening to the show and he said, Judy Roberts like? No. No. <laughs> We won't yeah. mention that. Do you know the name Colly Podwell? Does anyone know that name? Mm -hmm. She used to be a kind of a torchy singer oh, no. in Lincoln Park back in the day. Who's on this album? Oh, uh, Dave Liebman, uh, um, who toured with, of course, Miles Davis. Let's yeah. see it. Um, Maybe we could go back. And yeah, Dave about. Liebman, um, Tom Who's Harrell. Do that one, Michael. Yeah. Tom Harrell, who's they're both Great. jazz masters. Great. And what was the name of the song in? Spring can really hang you up okay. the most. That's uh, not a title that just rolls out. <laughs> can really hang you up the most. Wait, wait, Michael. Okay. No, we don't have that much time. We're going to ask some questions. Okay. Hey, hey, we're back. You're listening to Live from the Heartland. We're talking to Erin McDougall, and she is the Chicago-based jazz vocalist, band leader, composer, <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, we were just listening to your Spring Can Really Hang You Up the Most. And who's on that album with you? Well, um, I should start off saying David Liebman on saxophone. And uh, he played well, with Miles, Miles, right? Miles, yep, among others. Uh, and Tom Harrell uh, on trumpet, and he's played with everyone. Uh, he was around Dizzy Gillespie, and we were friends and fans of one another. So uh, we also have Rob Block, who was living in Chicago for a good 10 years, and now he's in New York. Um, Chumbo Corniel does percussion, Mark Sherman on vibes. There's about eight people on the album. So, Are yeah. these your tunes that you write, or are these are other people writing your tunes, or do you both? The title track of the album is my original, Outside the Story. Nice. And it was based on a poem that I wrote in 2007, just around the corner from here in Dearborn Park. I, was, I would, used to sit in the park all the time at night and write poetry. <laughs> I know. It's it wears you off just to think about it, right? It's obnoxious to people, right? <laughs> like her high perfect. heel wearing poetry writing. <laughs> that's that's um, but so that song became, I turned that into a song a composition and that became the title track. The rest of the songs are obscurities or, or jazz standards that we've kind of played with the meters. and Such items. an artist you are. Thanks. And I can imagine that um, because you are uh, producing so much that you are also encouraging young artists new artists, uh, musicians, to come and play with you. Do you find yourself discovering folks and I do, I bringing mean, them along? I feel, yeah, I feel that that's kind of the only way jazz survives, is that each new, each new generation coming into it and kind of passing on your, your ideas, your perspectives. Because at the end of the day, jazz is the thing that makes it, I think, thrive, is um, people taking or building upon the old, you know, somebody taking a base of something. It's just like architecture, and and recreating it into Sweet. a new perspective. So. Sweet. Where do people find you on the web before we come? Um, out my website is uh, in dire need of being updated. It's flappergirlsings.com. Um, my music is sold everywhere: Amazon, iTunes, Miles High record label. Um, I heard that we were on the BBC. So, so this is Aaron McDon McDougald, McDougald, spelled D O U G A L D, and uh, what a pleasure to meet you and you to, as well. Thank to you hear guys. you uh, sing. Uh, wonderful. I'm not sure if we're going out to Chuck Berry or we not. We are going to go out to okay. Chuck Berry. Are you going to announce anything else, Katie? we got another minute and a half Well, here. we have next week, we have activist Hassan Al Taib, author Pat Thomas, New City Editor Brian Hey, Jadi, hey, Jake, I'm not sure exactly how to say yeah, that. Brian's going to kill you next week. I know, I'm sorry, Brian. I really am He Gelke. He Gelke. Brian Thank you. Gelke. Thank you, Michael. Yes, yes. All right. We can, uh, we can listen to uh, Chuck, Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, he does while all we say thank you to everyone who makes this show possible and do good in the world. The world needs, the world all, needs all the good that you do. All, all power, power to, to the people. people.